Roman has a very nice way uh, with the crew and with the actors. He's very calm. Uh, he has a nice way of, because it's always about adjusting things. You shoot a take and we adjust a little bit of this here. The clothes adjust, the light adjusts, the performance adjusts. And he's just got a nice way of dialing that in. You know, so you always feel like he's paying real attention to what you're doing. And, it, it, you know, in relation to the whole scene, that it's just, a, it's all got to feel right together for it to work. It's not about one thing. Everything's got to be just right, but it doesn't feel real fussy. And so it's like the, the adjustments are, he's always, it's always positive. He doesn't get upset with things. He just goes, you know, could you uh, do this or that, or let's just pull that in a little bit. Yeah, this let's let's find our number our number two position for the Russian, and should be a little looser than this, but basically right. That's kind of perfect, right in there. Okay, David. Roman ran this thing like he just he knew you couldn't stump him. Hey, dude, what about the thing? Is it, oh no, that's a, he had an answer for everything, didn't he? Yeah. Not like a know-it-all, just like a guy that did his homework. Total trust, total and complete trust. Just uh. Sure about that? Yeah, and you, then you then you were sure. If Roman was sure, you were sure. I love how he deals with the dolly grips, the grip, and the, just all the technical pieces are just because he's done all these things himself. He shot lots of second unit. He's shot, done lots of camera work. He really understands the technology. So when he speaks, he's not speaking like a like a clown from film school. He's speaking like a guy who really knows what he's doing. You know, he doesn't have any. It doesn't have a whole lot of attitude. It has experience behind it. So everyone takes it. You know, all the suggestions very easily and naturally. Never gets upset, never yells at anybody, thanks everybody. Um, is it right? Is an absolute freaking pro. Operates, is the DP, lights it, wrote it. I had a meeting at his office and he gave me a tour and we like went on a Segway ride and everything. It was like a really, it was a really fun meeting and I could tell that he had a really great spirit about him and that anything he did would be, um, you know, different than anything else. I, f I could feel that he, he had a kind of childlike energy about filmmaking, which is what I really like, and those are the kind of filmmakers that I like to be around. I don't have a funny joke, but pretend like I just told one! <laughs> I gotta work with him again. That's what I was left this, you know, left this movie feeling. I gotta work with this man again. And cut, print. Or it's a wrap on Mr. Sheen. <laughs> Um, working with Bill Murray was pretty magical. It's Bill Murray. And he's so funny. He's so, uh, you see so many flashes from your childhood just talking to him, you know? Um, so, no, I was thrilled when he decided to, to, to do the movie. In the party scene, the Christmas scene, we're back to back, and I could feel his, like, Bill Murray energy, like, going, absorbing into my back, and then it fueled my performance. So that was great. It was good energy working with Bill Murray. And we got to dance on the beach together. And um, I think in one take, I jumped on his back. And I kept telling him to run into the ocean, but he didn't. He was there to work, man. And knew his lines and was just dialed. Knew my lines better than I did. He's got notes on your dialogue on his page. He's like, if I say this, I'm thinking maybe you. And it's all, it's all, a, it's like a team thing. You know, it's not like him against you. He'll invent stuff in the moment and then like craft it later on, you know? It's like his brain like opens up like six different hatches when it, when they call action. Bill was just um, he was just on fire. Um, he was saying things that I've just never I mean I just never thought to put words in those combinations. And then working with him, it was like uh, his, his rhythm is very bizarre. You don't know if he's forgotten his line. You're working with him now. You've known him for an hour. You don't want to like have him quit because of you. You're about to interrupt him seven times in the same scene. And he gets a word out, and like, okay, finish his line. I almost interrupted him. Again. Because I think, I think he went up. I should talk, then somebody else will talk, you know? Yeah, you're over there. He knows all of his lines. He just delivers them very specifically. But he changed the way I look at the world. Through his work. Um, well, there's a scene in the movie where Charlie and I are having um, coffee and food, and... Um, Bill Murray's character like slides in on this car 
Um, but he's like, get in the car, get in the car. And as we're running, where we were explodes. Obviously, we were someone was trying to take us out, um, not to dinner, off the planet, death, take us out, kill us. And um, it was pretty amazing. Like we were sitting there, and right before the table exploded, Charlie's like, "Do you realize that we're just sitting at a table that's completely wired to explode, and it could just explode right now?" And I was like. Shit, you, know, you didn't, why did you do that? Why did you say that? And, um, and we sat there for a long time, just like having a conversation, he was smoking a cigarette. And the second take, I was like, well, that was really close, and now we're sitting on a bomb. They're like, all right, everybody clear, no, no, no radios, you're sitting next to the bomb. Everybody's just safely away. He's waiting for somebody to go, hey, Jack, did you get my, t you know? Um, that didn't happen. To die with him there would, would have been a great way to go. Not the number one way I'd love to go, um, but definitely top 12. But it was crazy because it was really hot. Fucking hot ass explosion. Um, I really felt, I really felt the heat of it. I've never really been near an explosion before. They burned my jacket, you know that, right? I'm like two feet from the table, the guy blows it. I'm like, now I'm pushed by the fire and I can smell my clothes. And if you can see it though, we're right in the middle of it, right? And I didn't expect that we could ever hope to have such a big explosion, but they were, you know, they used a certain propane rig and, and um, were able to do it with relative ease and multiple times. So uh, I was surprised I'd never done that before. And the fact that Jason and Charlie were both, you know, right in the vicinity of the explosion and uh, weren't harmed was, I think, made it exciting. I was kind of excited because I was like, I do feel like I'm on fire, but I also feel good. So they'll be able to put me out. And then I'll have a great start. <laughs> no, have a great start. I felt like it caught on fire, but it didn't. <laughs> Little Charlie Swan the third, Junior. One of my favorite scenes has to be singing that crazy song. The song that they sing, Aquas de Marso, I think properly, uh, is, some, is a song that I've always loved. I thought you know, it's very touching. It took me like a month to learn. Uh, and. It was great because I've, I've had one of the biggest fears of singing in public and thinking I've always been, not tone deaf, but shy about it for sure. Catherine went over and laid down the tracks. And I said, when I heard, I went, wow, this Argentinian, this Portuguese singer is great. She's like, it's Catherine. I'm like, no, it's not. And she was like, really good, right? And then I came in and did my, and like, you're gonna put those together? sung by a man and a woman, and it just seemed like, um, you know, again, in this character's imagination, that uh, that's how he would choose to have his final moment be with this woman that he loved and that's no longer going to be with. It is a fantasy sequence, and it's kind of um, inspired by, you know, an old television show performance. So to me, the exact lip sync or that he might be playing guitar or not was hardly very important. To me, it was more the spirit of what they conveyed, and uh, they both sang their respective parts and, and I think did a nice job. So uh, to me, it was just about the playfulness of it and the, the you know, the, um, you know, just have a good spirit of them enjoying each other's company and celebrating, um, you know, the, what they had together in the form of a song. It was, yeah, it was all phonetic at that point. That's a difficult language, man. Uh, this 